Welcome back. So we got Kanto weapons now. That's pretty cool, to be honest. We did know about this to an extent when it came to the Fey channel, but we only really got solid confirmation about the effects when we got the trailer. However, one of the things I was definitely worried about was the dagger, because if it was Kanto remaining, then it probably wouldn't have seen as much use as maybe something like the sword, which was Kanto remaining plus one. But turns out it's just fixed Kanto, so no matter how far you move, just always going to allow you to move one space, which honestly I dig it. It's better than remaining, because you don't really have to worry about using up all your movement too much. With some exceptions, depending on play style, but nevertheless, I want to talk about these weapons and potential uses for them, because I do think there's quite a bit you can do with it, whether that be for hit and run purposes, because generally with Kanto, the idea is that you tend to run away from the enemy or position yourself in some way so you can have units come in with maybe Wings of Mercy strategies or whatever the case may be, but there is other things you can do with it. In any case, we may as well just go right into it. I want to discuss these new weapons because I do think there's quite a bit you can do with it. But also on some quick notes, there are a few things worth mentioning about these Kanto weapons. So these are just straight up near trees and far trees. Well, fix Kanto for the dagger, but nevertheless. If you use a skill that has a warp effect, so assault troop, aerobatics, flyer formation, whatever the case may be, it will only give swords one movement because these don't work with teleportation. However, with the fixed Kanto on the dagger, you will be able to move one space no matter what you do anyway, so it doesn't really apply there. But also, the Kanto and the attack speed boost are completely separated. The attack speed boost is a separate condition, while the Kanto just exists for existing, so that's really nice. And with all other types of Kanto, this is also affected by Kanto control, and even though the dagger is fixed Kanto, it will still be affected the same way as everything else, so the melee will still get their one movement and the range will get none. And that's pretty much it when it comes to the Kanto weapon effects and how they generally work. Let's talk about some builds, because I do want to discuss this quite a bit. As far as the best classes go for these types of weapons, for swords, I would definitely say the infantry are probably the best one because they have access to a lot of other skills that allow them to compete in the player phase comparatively to cavalry, flyers, and armors, but even with that being the case, they only have two movements. So where cavalry already have three movements statically, they will have to run either a support unit or a tempest skill if you just want to do it for hit and run purposes, because with gale force and hit and run, the idea is that you want to walk out of the enemy's general direction as much as possible so that you can potentially get repoed out and then you're not at risk of getting hit or potentially done. So for the infantry swords, for example, you can run something like Florid King with Gale Force, Flashing Blade, no follow up, a Tempest, and Blade Session. So, assuming that the foe can counterattack back, you will be able to charge up Gale Force, but you could also run external support that provides accelerated cooldowns, such as Valoria or Grim Raphael, or even Infantry Pulse or Grand Scratcher, depending on the unit you're using. It will be easier with some over others, but with Valoria and Groom Raphael, it's static no matter what. That being said, I would say that having Flashing Blade is definitely going to be a lot more convenient just for triggering Gale Force, because every other class minus armors have to use Heavy Blade, which is a bit more difficult comparatively. But even then, you could still use it on the right units, of course. You're not really going to do it with units maybe with like 32 base attack, but it really, really depends on like support and all of that but anyway if we continue on we can also replicate that same build but instead of no follow-up you can run close call you will be at risk of not being able to secure your own follow-ups if the foe has an impact effect but if that isn't a problem then with close call or even hit and run you can move back even more spaces which does allow you to just retreat even more which is really really good but again this is mainly for hit and run purposes Another benefit that infantry have is that they can run stuff like Times Pulse, so if they were to run Frenzy, for example, with Flashing Blade, then they can continually charge Gale Force, and you could still do, again, the whole hit and run stuff, because again, like, hit and run is like the quintessential thing you could probably do with stuff like Florid Cane and Florid Knife. That aside, there are just a bunch of options you can do with Gale Force. So if it means running a damage reduction skill, but also making sure you're minimizing the amount of damage you're taking in retaliation, that actually does quite a bit more than close call will, because you're just negating a good amount of damage in general. However, close call and hit and run will allow you to retreat more, but if you do have extra movement, then it probably won't be too bad if you're just positioning quite well. 
And then another thing you can do is you can ditch any sort of like no follow up or damage reduction or whatever the case may be, and you can just run tempo. If you, the goal is just to output a good amount of damage and then retreat a bit. There's always means of just baiting out foes, depending on like the mode you play, of course. Because if you play like Aether Raids, you will have to get into like a specific area so they trigger their movement. But if you're doing something like Arena or Arena Assault, they're going to move on their own. So if you do have a foe that comes up to you, then you don't really have to worry all too much about maybe running Gale Force, as you could always just position yourself with whatever movement you gain from Florid Cane. Still, with Tempo, you can secure your low cooldown or high cooldown, depending on the special you're really using. I chose Vital Astra because with Flashing Blade, depending on the foe you go up against, some may not even be able to counterattack. You'll be able to trigger Vital Astra no matter what, which is really nice. But with all of this in mind, you do have to remember that all these units can't necessarily run everything. So there are support units that can apply to both infantry and then like the rest, but that will ultimately depend on the support units. Three notable support units I would include are Infantry No Follow-Up, which isn't a unit, but <laughs> it's on Ascended Celica, so she's going to be on the screen. Annette and Astrid. Ascended Celica is able to provide Infantry No Follow-Up to all infantry allies within two spaces, which is really, really nice, just so you have that effect. And generally speaking, you're going to be running Floridkin with speedier units, so you can secure your own doubles, because unlike Coral Saber, you don't have that ability to just guarantee a follow-up. You do need to make a speed check, so something like Infantry No Follow-Up will make a really, really good support skill for them. You can even put it on a Dancer if you really want to, so they have that going for them. That's assuming you want to kill an Ascended Celica, but it's still really good nonetheless. You could also run Fallen Lilith, but that is only tied to one unit. But to be fair, if you are able to get a unit with Gale Force or whatever the case may be into the enemy's range, she can teleport in which does actually make Wings of Mercy strategies or just teleportation in general really, really convenient with this weapon. It's also worth noting that Fallen Lilith can provide no follow-up to cavalry, flyers, and armors. Ew, well, armors don't really need it, but you can, they can get it. So unlike infantry no follow-up, they still can benefit from the likes of Fallen Lilith. So she should probably be on the screen. Actually, I'll just put it right here. I would also recommend her if you are only running one unit specifically, but if you have a full composition that would be running maybe Florid King or Florid Knife, then it isn't the worst by any means just to have infantry no follow around. But you don't need to send a Celica for that. You could put that on a much better support unit. You also have Annette and Astrid respectively. They both grant additional movement, but Astrid does also grant bonus doubler, so you can potentially secure doubles more frequently and kills. So both of them still work quite well. You could always just run Astrid for the bonus doubler. But you could also run Annette with Infantry No Follow, and she also has her value right there. Not bad whatsoever. Next, we move on to the Cavalry. And the Cavalry don't have as much to work with as probably the rest of the classes, surprisingly. They have flows, but outside of that, they don't really have anything like damage reduction, or they don't have any other sort of like effects like Dive Bomb or like Aerobatics or anything of the sort. And in terms of their C skills, it's not exactly the strongest either, but for what it's worth, Flows are still really, really good, and they do have access to Catch, which does provide up to 9 attack speed, which is really, really easy to do for stuff like Cavalry, because all it really requires is the foe having 100% and the debuff, which can be easy enough to do. And the same logic does follow with the infantry. You stack up attack and speed so you can double, and then you run Heavy Blight so you can secure your Gale Force procs, and assuming the foe can counter attack, you will be able to run out or attack again, and then run out with Florid King, which is really, really good. However, again, it's worth noting that Heavy Blade checks are going to be a lot harder. Even with modern day units like Kent, you still have units that can just absolutely ruin your chances at triggering Heavy Blade, which does suck, but nevertheless, it is what they have to work with. So, oh, what can you do? You could also run a Menace if you want to make Heavy Blade checks a bit easier, and it does pair well with Catch, as it will debuff a foe. And honestly, this is probably one of the better skills you could run over Rouse, because even though Rouse is a lot more consistent in buffing yourself, Attack Speed Menace does debuff the foe's attack, meaning that you are getting a bit more of an attack swing, which is just good for securing Heavy Blade. And you can do the same thing with like Hit and Run. They can't get close call, but with Hit and Run, they can actually retreat with the most movement, which is why I did put it on the list. I personally prefer Flows just because you want to secure your own doubles, and anything with an impact effect will just ruin their chances at them. 
And I figured I'd also bring up the Coral Saber Trace versus the Floored King Flow comparison. They both provide the same effects. Trace Coral Saber, you get the retreat. And with Coral Saber, you guarantee your own double. But that can also be shut down. But with Flow Floored King, you also get the null follow-up effect and you get Trace in the weapon. The big difference here is just going to be that Flows provide an extra effect as opposed to Trace, which is just a debuff. So if you can afford to run Floored Cane with a Flow, that's generally going to be a lot better compared to Coral Saber and Near Trace. Granted, you won't necessarily have to make a speed check with Coral Saber, but even then, you do get an extra effect from the flow, and the Floored Cane does provide additional stats. Granted, depending on the trace you use, if you debuff the foe's attack and defense, such as with Near Trace, or attack defense Near Trace, then you're essentially getting plus three attack defense and res. But again, that will ultimately depend on the one you're using. You're still getting five attack and speed. So I would still say for faster units, Floored Cane with flow is a lot better. And then we move on to the Flyers, who definitely have a bit of an easier time probably triggering Heavy Blade because they have access to the likes of Rain Skills. However, I still think Cavalry are a bit better just because they have permanent 3 movement. They don't have to run a C skill or an assist or anything of the sort to get additional movement. But if they were to run something like Annette or Astrid, then they can get 4 movement. But even with that being the case, Flyers will probably have an easier time triggering Heavy Blade because, again, they can run Reigns. But that will just depend on how many combats you enter because with a Menace, you can still debuff the foe's attack by 6 points as opposed to Reigns that only debuff for 4. But nevertheless, you can still run it on Flyers. They also have access to Flows, which is really, really, really nice. So if you want to run something pretty generic on maybe like a Tanith or even Record, you could keep Floored Cane, run Gale Force, catch a Flow, and then either a Tempest or a Rain. Rain is going to be convenient, again, for triggering Heavy Blade, but Tempest is just good for hidden run strategies as you're able to get in and out with a lot more movement. It's a lot more safe. But it's not their only options. You can run something more offensive with Dive Bomb and Heavy Blade, so you can trigger two cooldown specials really, really easily in succession. And you still get the additional remaining plus one. So you can still retreat relatively well if you don't max out your movement like crazy, but there are always means of around it. But then they also have access to the likes of Sturdy Impact and Flyer Formation and Aerobatics. So they can teleport in, they can prevent guaranteed follow-ups, and they can still retreat with Floor King because even with the teleportation, you still get the plus one additional to move. So it's not necessarily the worst to consider, especially if you just want to position your units in a specific way. It's just for flexibility purposes. And outside of the flyers, you do have the armors, and it's definitely a meme with the armors. You can still try it, and I'm trying to think of something you could potentially do with them, because maybe there's some interesting mechanic or gimmick or niche you can fulfill with them, but really, it's going to be for like player phase only because that's how Kanto works. So if you want to try it on an armor, you can stack up attack and speed, run armor stride. Armor stride will give them two movement, and that's nice if you just want to consistently have that kind of movement. But don't expect them to retreat with that much because they will still have to extend unless the foe initiates on them and then they attack afterward. In which case they'll potentially have up to 3 movement, but generally it's not going to be the strongest in terms of hit and run. Or really in general, you're probably better off just running Coral Saber. But maybe you could try something with Armor March and then a Near Save. So you still get the 2 movement, but then you could retreat and then get in range of an ally and protect them. Maybe there's something there, but I really couldn't tell you. I really tried with this. It's, uh, it's not really like the best. But I'm sure there's something you can do. And that's as far as the Kanto Sword goes. Next we have the Dagger, which is fixed Kanto plus one. And in my general opinion, I would say that the Flyers are probably going to be better than the Cavalry in this instance. Because Cavalry actually don't have that many B slots or even C slots to work with comparatively to Flyers. But they do have three movement, which is really nice just for getting into combat. However, because this is fixed Kanto and it doesn't work on remaining, I would still say that Flyers have the edge over them. And if this were just regular Far Trace, Cavalry would be better because Flyers tend to extend their movement way too much. But with this, you do have a lot more flexibility in your movement. So Flyers, I would definitely give the edge over Cavalry. But nevertheless, they're both pretty decent with it. And I would still say Infantry Reign King with it, and then Armors are like, Armors. 
what can you do with those. Anyway, in terms of usage for infantry, you can either run a Blazing Wind set, or you can actually run a Lethality set. There are probably other things you can do in the player phase, but I find that these are probably two of the strongest you can do. So for the Blazing Wind set, you will have to rely on some sort of support, whether that's like World Breaker or a Flashing Blade, depending on what you want to use. You can run World Breaker and then have a Life and Death Seal, so your Blazing Wind is doing a lot more. But like all the other ones, they can still charge it relatively quick because they are infantry and they can still run stuff like Valoria just to have it ready to go. And then you could kind of make them like a weaker Yuri. They will have one move to work with, but that's about it, and they can only move two spaces. So it's like a budget Yuri sort of thing but don't expect it to be as effective, but it does work. But then you also have the Lethality set, which actually does work quite well, because with Time Spulls, it becomes a three cooldown special, and assuming the foe can counterattack, you will be able to trigger Lethality, also as long as they don't have guard effects. But with three cooldown and sturdy impact and no follow-up, you're basically prolonging your longevity in the player phase, which is really, really good. So for units like Cat, she can actually output a fair amount of damage. And then we get to the last three classes. Honestly, I was struggling to think of something you can do with them, but their lack of B slots and C slots, mainly for the Cavs, the Flyers at least have C slots, but that's also fairly limited to just reigns. And then armors are armors. I find that they're probably the weakest with this and would much prefer any other weapon, such as Courtly Fan and Vicious Stagger, because it does have half no follow up in it, meaning that you can still run stuff like Wind Sweep and Water Sweep. But nevertheless, you can still stack up attack and speed with stuff like Attack Speed Catch and Speed Smoke 4 and a lull. And it may be difficult to trigger Heavy Blade with maybe someone like Dean, but if you can do it, then you can get Noontime on every second hit. But even if that doesn't work, or if the foe can counter attack, Honestly, you could always just swap that out for like Blade Session, and that would be good too. For the Flyers, you still have access to Impacts, which I would say, again, gives them an edge, because they can still prevent guaranteed follow-ups, or any sort of follow-up, which is really, really good. Even without the likes of the Null Follow-Up Dagger, where they can just outright prevent it with Wind Sweep or Water Sweep, depending on what foe you go up against. But also, because they have access to Reigns, it's going to be a lot easier to trigger Heavy Blade, as they can debuff the foe's attack, and they can still get additional attack if they were to run something like Attack Defense Rain, as they are also debuffing them for defense. So you're essentially getting like actual attack, but also their debuffing attack. But anyway, they can still run stuff like Aerobatics and Flyer Formation, so you do have a bit more leniency in your movement. And again, because it is fixed Kanto, you don't have to worry about overextending, which is why I do think for Flyers, it can work, but they would definitely love a B slot, to be honest, in general, that would be really good. And then for the armors, it's again, just really, really difficult to recommend because generally most armors are better in the enemy phase. You do have exceptions that can work really, really well in the player phase, like some are Edelgard, but outside of that, you're definitely better off running an enemy phase set. But if you really want to try it, you can run Florid Knife with maybe Bold Fighter and Quick Repose, so you have some sort of player and enemy phase presence, but this is definitely like a Copium 2018 build. And then with Far Save, you can still protect your allies. Maybe, the, again, there is some sort of niche here, but for me, I'm still kind of struggling to see it. But if anybody does it, let me know, because I really want to see it in action. But that's about it for the Kanto weapons. Overall, I do think the weapons are pretty cool. I don't necessarily find the dagger one to be that crazy outside of maybe for infantry because they can still do a bit of something. And maybe the flyers to an extent, but I'm more impressed with the sword and I'm glad that's the one that's free because now I can just run that on any sort of player phase unit that may not have a dedicated PRF and then do some like hidden run Gale Force stuff. But let me know what you think down below. Are you going to be using this weapon for anything of the sort? What unit are you going to put it on? Do you not like Kanto? Are you going to keep Rickard? Just let me know down below. If you want to see more videos like this and you want to show your support, just make sure to like and subscribe. And until next time, I'll see you later.